Dum bum 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 bum. Da 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 bum. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Alrighty guys, so welcome back. This is your host, ID Jester, back in Panzer Grenadier, the fall of France, 1940. Scenario number one, a beautiful morning. This is part two. Of course, Panzer Grenadier is made by Avalanche Press, so hopefully you guys will check out the system, check out their um Check out their webpage, download the rules, the fourth edition rules, and a trial version of the game, and give it a whirl for yourself, and hopefully I can do a little bit of helping you along with this process, which is what we're going to talk about at the beginning of this video, before we actually get to gameplay. So if you're interested only in gameplay, you should probably advance it for a little bit, because I want to talk about why it's taken me so long to get part two out. And the reason for that is because rules, uh, the new edition, the fourth edition of the rules are supposed to include much better examples, clarify uh, things that were not in the first, uh, third edition rules and kind of help players understand the game a little bit better so as you know last time we ended up these units here attacked this truck and we were trying to decide what ends up happening in this truck right and there are some rules that <laughs> uh, let's just say the fourth edition rules don't help the panzer grenadier system as much as I would have liked because there are still a bunch of misconceptions in rules the fourth edition rules so I love Panzer Grenadier I love Avalanche Press I have nothing uh, we talked about the fact that they have done much better with their products much better quality much better look much better everything since the first wave of Panzer Grenadier and then when they updated the third edition rules, which are pretty good, but still had a bunch of, uh, oh, what do we want to call them, issues with the with the rules. Then they updated the fourth edition rules, which is super good, but there are still issues. And I'm going to go over and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So, <sighs> all right, so let's start. Let's start. So we're going to go to our desktop here. So you can see this is the fourth edition rules, right? All right. I know what the answer is, and it makes sense what the answer is, but I'm going to show you if you are new to the system, what kind of problems you can run into, right? So we're going to scroll down to anti-tank anti -tank fire right blah 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 so if you're looking through the rules you're trying to find what can I do how can I what happens with this tank or uh, what happens with this truck right and you're under uh, the anti-tank section and you're like hmm what can I do about this well does list trucks have no armor protection? No armor protection. It is treated as having an armor value of minus one for purposes of calculating anti-tank defensive dice roll modifiers against them. Okay, so they don't have armor. They're just considered a minus one armor value when you do anti-tank fire on them, right? So, then you come over to this section, and it says 7.25, armor immunity. If a unit has printed armor value, even if the value is zero. It is immune to all but X or X number X results from the direct fire or bombardment table. If the unit is an APC, any unit or leader it's transporting as well is immune. 
Armor gives no protection on the assault table. So then you think, hmm, all right, so if the unit doesn't have a printed armor value, even if the value is a zero, well, wait a minute. Our truck is actually got a minus one. Why is minus one not listed there? If the unit has a printed armor value, even if the value is zero, it's immune to all but the X and X number X results in the direct fire table or bombardment table. Hmm, so that doesn't really help, right? So that's why we're having problems trying to decide what's going to happen. So with this truck, so what we have to actually do is we actually have to go and have to go to a different section here. This is why this is not as helpful as it could be. All right, so we have to go into the direct fire. And you can see that direct fires trace through vacated hexes, enemy occupied hexes, or hexes containing only friendly AFVs. Direct fire may not be traced through hexes containing friendly non AFV units unless the firing unit is a heavy machine gun, an AFV, or an anti aircraft unit. These units may fire through hexes containing all types of friendly units if the fire is also traced through at least one hex which contains no enemies blah 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 and that's probably not what I was looking for actually <laughs> uh, now I'm gonna have to find it again all uh, right where is it it's here somewhere oh it's here somewhere bum, 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 bum. Okay, where is it? Uh... Oop, there we go. So it's actually under the section for fire combat. It's actually under combat, right? But you got to scroll down to this section here. Step losses, right? Direct and bombardment fire. Direct and bombardment fire attacks affect the entire target hex. An X result, which is what we ended up rolling on that, on the direct or bombardment fire table causes the following damage. One step loss to non-combat units in the hex, except close stop AFVs, and one step loss to a wagon, truck, or sledge unit in the hex. In all cases, the only player chooses which unit in both of the categories listed takes a step loss. If a hex does not contain units of a given type, for example, there's no wagon, trucks, or sledges, the step loss of that type is ignored. If a 2x or 3x result is rolled, the fire causes two or three steps losses, respectively, on both unit types above. The owning player gets to choose which units in each of the categories to take the second and third step losses, except at least one of the step losses must be taken on an open tap AFV at present. All right, so we lose a step loss to a wagon, truck, or sledge in the hex. Well, the truck is only one step, right? So, oh, you can't see because I'm... I'm on this table here. All right, so a truck, if we look at a truck, oh, that's smacking you guys in the face. Sorry about that. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. All right, so a truck here, if I can get it to zoom in, the truck only has one step on the back as a wagon. So we will remove the truck, right? So what happens with the other, the other, uh, you know, what happens to all the stuff that's inside the truck, the wagon, or the sledge? Why couldn't they have just added a simple little sentence that says, and everything it's carrying? Because basically what we have to do is now find another section. This is where I'm talking about, I love Avalanche Press, I love Panzer Grenadier, I think it's really good, but it's just so hard to get new players into it because they're constantly having to look things up because it's not well explained in the rule book and even in version 4 which I'm really disappointed on one step loss to a wagon truck or sledge unit in the hex all right so if you lose one step loss to a wagon or a truck in this case what happens to what is the truck is carrying does that count as one of these other 
one step loss to a combat unit? Does it not count as that? See, it's not exactly... You can see right here, it is not exactly... Uh, so what we have to actually do, and I'm not even going to find this section, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to type in... I'm going to type in transport. We're going to do a search for transport, right? Target spawning. Yeah, we don't care about that. X, Sega Hex. Nope. Morale. Call modifiers. Minimum strength. Recovery bonus. Cavalry. Special rules. Nope. Uh, nope, that's not it. Nope, nope. Okay. Uh, that's for anti-tank fire, which this wasn't, so you can ignore this section. Uh, okay, that tells us what we can do with them. Bum, 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 bum. All right. Stacking purposes. Right. Armor process personnel. Um. Transports. What happens when you move a transport? Toad units, harmless enemies. Oh my gosh, where is it? Alright, here, I think this is it. Uh, when loading and transporting everything, and being loaded, no, that's transporting. Transporting personnel, transporting weapons. Taking damage. Here we go. If a transport unit is fired on everything it is transporting suffers the same fate as the transport. If a transport must make a morale check due to enemy fire, make one roll for the transport only, adding the morale bonus of any one leader it is carrying or in a in its hex or an adjacent hex. If the transport becomes disrupted or demoralized or is eliminated, so does everything it's transporting. So one little tiny section that somebody has to try and find in the rule book to help clarify because I, it's just still it's still a little bit um, you know a little bit confusing even for an avid tactical war gamer such as myself. So when you take an X result, right, you lose one step of a combat unit in a hex and one step to a wagon. But it doesn't tell you if the wagon is actually transporting. So why would the wagon, obviously, let's say everyone in the hex empties or, or exits from the vehicle, right? Right? Say they were exited, then we have a leader, we have a unit, and we have a, uh, we have a, we have a, uh, uh, let me get my tweezers out here, because this is going to be a thing, isn't it? I think it is. All right. So, so if they exited out of the truck, we have a major, right? And we got a heavy machine gun, and then we have a truck. So that's easy, right? One step loss to the heavy machine gun. And one step loss to the vehicle. But what happens if you have the units inside the vehicle? That other section says you lose the truck and everything that's in the truck plus a step loss of one combat unit. Right? So there's still some non... I mean, this should. As you can see, uh, I'm not trying to make a bigger ordeal than it should be here. Hey, Rough Swordsman. Just got Panzer Grenadier Invasion 1944, so you've got to get these rules sorted out for me. <laughs> well, that's what we're doing right now. We're clarifying the rules here, and we're going to talk about them. And hopefully, um, 
you know, my example or my issues will help you uh, play your game. Rough Swordsman, glad you got Panzer Grenadier. I think you'll be happy with it. I'd love to see an unboxing of it. I want to see what the maps look like. I want to see what the counters look like. Uh, you know, all that stuff. So if you can do an unboxing for me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer, that would be super, super good. So, as you can see, it's, it's with the 4th edition rules, there's still some issues that don't really clarify, right? Because some people can read, let's go back to this section here, so you can, uh, some people, right, can read this as, when I do an X result, I'm going to take one step loss of a combat unit in the hex and one step loss of one wagon. Well, that means you blow up the wagon, right? And then my heavy machine gun takes a step loss, right? That's how you can interpret that, because... Each direct and bombardment fire attack affects the entire target hex, and X results on the direct or bombardment fire table causes the following damage. One step loss to one combat unit in the hex, except closed top AFEs, and one step loss to one wagon, truck, or sledge unit in the hex. Does not go on to explain what happens to the units that are inside the truck the wagon or the sled. <sighs> That's just one of the issues. We're going to talk about a couple of the other issues that, because I basically spent the last week scurrying through this fourth edition rule book. Again, I love Panzer Grenadier. I love Avalanche Press. I think uh, they do a a good job, and they've been doing better and better and better through the years of making their products better for people, making it uh, easier to understand. But this this rule book is written from by someone. I don't know who wrote this, but they know the rules inside and out, and they don't explain everything as they should. Because uh, if we go to, there's another section here. And I think it's under, right? Uh, it's under AT fire, right? So let's see if we go to the AT fire section. Where is that? That's line of sight examples. Bombardment fire, direct fire, anti-tank fire. Um... Okay, so here is another thing that can throw people for a loop. Have I tried the Panzer Grenadier Facebook group? Uh, no, I have not, to be honest. I mean, I know, I know the answers, right? I know what the answers are, and I know how to play it. I just playing devil's advocate here to show people, okay, you know, if I run into these issues, but these. These issues, you should not run into issues because of the rule book. That's my point. You should not run into issues because of the rule book. You can see under anti-tank fire, it says only trucks, jeeps, and AFVs may be attacked with anti-tank fire. Which makes, you know, if I was to read that, being new to the game, right, it makes me think, wait a minute, only trucks, jeeps, and AFVs can be attacked with anti-tank fire. So can they be attacked with direct firepower? Can they be attacked with bombardment firepower? Because it says only trucks, jeeps, and AFVs may be attacked with anti-tank fire. So you can read that two different ways. I guess it's the wording here that really throws me for a loop. All right, It's the wording that really throws me for a loop. Because it says only trucks, jeeps, and AFVs may be attacked. What it should say is, if you're using anti-tank fire, your only available targets are 
uh, trucks, Jeeps, and AFVs. Because again, you could read this if you're new to the system. If you are reading this, okay, I'm brand new to Panzer Grenadier. I don't play many tactical games. I got this as a Christmas gift, right? And so I'm like, oh, all right, let's see. Uh, I read this as only trucks, Jeeps, and AFVs can be attacked with anti-tank fire. So you can attack me unless you're using anti-tank fire. Right? So it's the wording that's the issue. Because we've already seen, yes, you can attack trucks, jeeps, and AFVs with direct combat fire or with bombardment fire. We know that because we've already seen that rule. But let's say I don't know because I'm new to this system. I read this as only trucks, jeeps, and AFVs may be attacked with anti-tank fire. So when I'm playing my buddy, I'm going, well, you can't attack me because you're, you're not using anti-tank fire. Right? So, <clears throat> it should say, when attacking with anti-tank attack, you can only target trucks, jeeps, and AFEs. Now, does that make not a, a little bit more sense to you? I'm going to show you another. So, we're going to go to the terrain effect charts, which are super, super, super important. Right? And we're going to look at slope. All right, we talked about slope. We did a specific episode dealing with nothing but slope, or 99% of the episode, or 90% of the episode, dealt with slopes because they're, they handle slopes much differently in Panzer Graded Deer than they do in a lot of other games. You can see it says here, C note, C note, right? And the other thing I don't like about this fourth edition terrain chart is every single solitary item says C note, C note, C note, C note, C note, C note. Why couldn't they just explain here instead of having to go and see your note? Anyways, back to slope. Again, I, I'm i not trying to put Panzer Grenadier down. I'm not trying to put Avalanche Press down. What I'm trying to do is say they created the 4th edition rules so that there wouldn't be as many problems or issues. Okay. Um, they created the fourth edition rules so there would be less confusion, right, or issues. But then the rule book creates those issues by the bad wording and the bad explanation. So under slope, yes. It's, you can entrench, yes, you can dig in, and then for spotting and other effects, you got to see the note. So let's go look at the note, right? So let's scroll up to the note. Here's slope. It tells you all about slope. So it says a slope hexide is any hex with an elevation line running through it. All right, pretty simple. We've already talked about that. Here's the problem I have is part two of this sentence representing the transition from a lower elevation to a higher elevation. That, my friends, is incorrect, right? Here's our map board. If I have a unit that is here, right, in this hex right here, and I move, I'm on a 40 hex, right, and I go to this hex right here, this goes from 40 to 20. So it, this slope hex does not represent a lower elevation of terrain because I'm going from a higher to a lower. So in that case, do you ignore the slope line? Do you not ignore, ignore the slope line? Again, bad wording. Bad wording in the rule book because, again, I'm on a 40. I go to this, you can see over here, this is level 20, it's a hill, and then we have another hill on top of the hill. So when I go to this slope hex line, it is 40 going down to 20. So it does not represent a transition of a lower elevation to a higher elevation. Which is exactly what it says in the rule book. Blah, blah, blah. The elevation line indicates an elevation of 20 meters or more above the adjacent terrain. Not true. 
<laughs> if it does, then I can ignore this. It's not a slope hex for me because I'm at a higher hex. So this whole paragraph is incorrect. This whole paragraph is incorrect. If, you go, if we go on to read it, the elevation line indicates an elevation of 20 meters or more above the adjacent terrain. Again, it's all in the wording. What it should say is a slope hex side is any hex with an elevation line running through it while moving from a lower elevation to a higher elevation. Blah, blah, blah. You know, they, this, this whole paragraph is just a joke. All right, this whole paragraph is is assuming this whole paragraph is assuming you are looking at oops, I got to come over here is you are um at a lower elevation and you're coming up to a higher elevation. Right? So that whole paragraph talks about you're on a lower level and you're going to a higher elevation. It does not take into play when you're on a higher elevation going to a lower elevation. All right, so that's just part one of the issue I have with this. Let's show you part two. Dave Gardner, wait, this isn't hockey. <laughs> no, it's not. Let's talk about the next thing that is ridiculously wrong in the rule book, and I will call out uh, Avalanche Press and Panzer Grenadier System and whoever designed this rule book. A slope is elevated terrain and blocks line of sight. You see that right here. So again, if I don't know what I'm doing, I read this and I go, oh, elevated terrain, it's elevated and it blocks line of sight. That's not true. That is 100% not true. Let's go back to our board here. If I have a unit here and I have a German unit here, this is... A slope, these two units can see one another. There is no blocked line of sight because of this slope. In fact, if the unit was here, again, the slope hex side, this does not block line of sight. If we go back to the rule book, it says a slope is elevated terrain and blocks line of sight. It does not. Only under certain circumstances does it block line of sight. So if I'm new to the game, I'm new to the system, I'm reading these inconsistencies in the rule book, and I'm like, hmm, wait a second. Slope is elevated terrain. So if I'm used to other war games out there, I'm looking at this situation, I'm going, oh yeah, my guy's back on the hill, so you can't see me, so we can't see one another. That's not how Panzer Grenadier does their slope hexes. Because this... Slope hex is closer to the higher unit. You can look down the slope at this unit right here. If this was the case, uh, let's put this unit back here. All right. Because the slope hex is closer to the lower unit, I can't look down the slope at this unit. So no, there is no line of sight between these two units. But in this case, there is line of sight between these two units. So line of sight is not blocked by slopes, which if you look at the rule book, it, it says slope is elevated terrain and blocks line of sight. <sighs> so that is some of the some of the issues that I've come across in the fourth edition rule book. Again, it's it's not that it's this rule is wrong, all right? Uh, but most of the rules just need better wording. A slope hex is a hex with an elevation line running through it, representing the transition from a lower elevation to a higher elevation. That is absolutely positively wrong. It is a slope hex represents the different elevations between one hex and another. Depends on if you're on the higher hex or not. So, and, and this, this whole paragraph is null and void because if you're on the higher hex, none of this makes any sense whatsoever. And then to follow that up with uh, a slope is elevated terrain, 
and blocks line of sight. And we're not even going to get into the fact that you have things like town that says block line of sight. Yes, towns do block line of sight, but there are specific examples where they don't. For example, if I have these units right here, I'm just going to, uh, you know what, I'm not going to mess up my board here because we're going to actually get to play in here in a minute. Uh, if I have this unit here, uh, no, that's a bad example. Um, how am I going to do this? Right, all right, I'll put that here. I'll put that here. And I'm going to put these guys at the level 40. No, um, all right, hang on. Because this is such a tight quarter map it's hard to get a an example but uh, what I need is I need a town hex and I can see over here we go all right uh, so I'm gonna bring this unit over here all right so I'm at level 40 right here this is level 20 hex this is level zero hex it's got a building in it this is a level zero building with the hex in it. You would think this blocks line of sight, but in this case, because I'm at level 40, all right, and this is one, two, three hexes away, and this is one, two, three hexes away, it's equal distance between these two units. I can actually see over this building from this unit to this unit and see over it so this these buildings do not block line of sight. So again, it does say, you know, buildings block line of sight right which is normal on that but they should have a caveat on here that says unless unless viewed from a higher uh, a, a unit that's on a higher terrain same thing with villages which block line of sight which brings up another point right okay so there's villages and there are towns what is the difference between these two? So you go in the rule book and you go, hmm, I don't know what the difference between a village and a town is. So you try to find the definition of village, oops, or town. So we're going to look up village. So roads don't extend into town or village hexes. Uh, you pay the town or village movement, okay? And minor rivers. And major rivers and how are they handled by villages and when spawning from a town hex not a village hex you treat the town as being 20 meters higher that's it there's no reference in the rule book for what the difference between a town and a village is right so we go hmm let's look at our terrain chart we go to our terrain chart and it just lists village and it lists town no depiction no ex explanation about what is a village what is a town right so i'm i'm thinking maybe on the third edition rule book right so if we go back to the third edition rule book we look at the third edition they only have towns in the third edition rule book or terrain effect chart they only have town they don't have village anywhere right and it shows you a little picture of what a town looks like so then I'm thinking well maybe just maybe it's in like the scenario book which we sh we showed you about right so what what you know the all the special rules for this scenario right so I'm thinking terrain says all terrain uh, from Panzer Grenadier rule book and tables are in effect. The fall of France and some additional terrain types appear listed below. They are light woods, hedgerows, trails, railboat, railroad embarkments, and sunken railroads. So light woods, hedgerows, trails, railroad embarkments, and sunken railroads. Those are, those are the special rules. So where... In God's name, 
is anything about a village listed anywhere in Panzer Grenadier other than here is a village and here is a town in the terrain effects chart. There's absolutely... I can't find... I've been looking for information on what's the difference between a town and a village. Is, you know, what I would guess, right, if I'm just guessing, if I'm just guessing, I'm thinking a town, right, is going to be multiple hex stacked adjacent to one another, while a village is just a single hex. That's what I'm thinking. Or is it based upon how many buildings are in the hex? Like uh, if you have three buildings, it's a town hex. If you only have one building, it's a village. I, nothing anywhere in the rule book ever that I can find talks about the difference between a village and a hex. Which is, again, they're just... They're making this harder for new people than it should be. It, they're they're making it harder for, um, and you know, we look at our uh, information here in the rule book. Village blocks line of sight, limiting terrain. Town limiting terrain, adds 20 meters, and blocks line of sight. That's the only thing it tells you about the villages and the towns. So, uh, it's. Here's what I found. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Good Lord. Here's what I found. And unfortunately, the 4th edition rules don't do anything to help new players. Absolutely nothing. Which is why I hopefully will show you guys a little bit of this information. Right? So that you have a good example. Hopefully I won't screw too much of it up. Because I interpret the rules possibly different than the way you interpret the rules just because you can go to a certain section and say, well, this says, you know, um, only tanks, AFVs, and APCs, and trucks may be attacked by anti-tank fire. You can point to that rule. Or, you know, I mean, we're just... We're just covering some of the basics. The problem is... The problem is Avalanche Press, whoever writ, wrote... Whoever written... Whoever wrote... There we go. Whoever wrote this rule book is obviously a Panzer Grenadier guy. They played probably hundreds of scenarios. They know everything in their head... And when they transfer it to the page, it doesn't help new players, right? What they need to do is have someone that's not as familiar with the system write the rule book. So they will explain it better and use better words, I guess. Anyways, that's enough of my rant. You've done listen to it. Um, again, this is nothing against Panzer Grenadier. It's just... It's sad. It really is that they they need to clarify a bunch of this stuff. They need to they need to just use some better wording. They need to just fine tune this. I was under the impression the fourth edition rule book was so much better because it gives some nice examples, which it does give some nice examples and stuff. But there's still some inconsistencies, as I showed you you know, on all their charts, right? Look at the terrain chart. See the note. The note says the slope is elevation line running through it, representing a tradition, a transition from a lower elevation to a higher elevation, and slopes are elevated terrain that block line of sight. It's not true at all, especially, especially, I can understand how they say towns are block line of sight and village block line of sight and woods block line of sight because that is all assuming the same level. But when you're giving the definition of a slope, the slope describes at least two different levels of units. So you can't say that a slope blocks line of sight. Of all the places in the rule book to have where it blocks line of sight, you can't use slope because you're talking about two different levels. 
All right, that's done. Let's move on. So what we ended up finding after all that is these units here attacked the truck. They got an X result. The X result is going to blow up the truck, which is going to blow up everything inside the truck. And even though you could interpret the rules differently, which is really bad because inside the truck for the Germans was the Gross Deutschland heavy machine gun, a full strength one, by the way, and a major. Now, Panzer Grenadier has what they call catastrophic loss. Is that the catastrophic loss one? Hang on a second. It's called... Um, yes. So catastrophic loss. Anytime a unit of major or higher a leader unit that's major or higher is killed, all units stacked with that unit have to undergo an immediate morale check and they subtract the morale modifier instead of adding their morale fire, morale, morale modifier. And this represents, you know, the major really good at rallying his troops and now that he's dead, they're really bad. So you can see this major here, if I can get it to focus, which would be super cool. Right, he has a plus one morale modifier. So, if when this major dies, um, all the units in the hex are going to take a morale modifier check, and they're going to lose one to their morale because of the major's modifier. Instead of adding, it subtracts. All right, so that is catastrophic loss anytime you lose a major or higher. Now, the other thing is they also have decapitation. So if the highest ranking leader on a side is eliminated, each unactivated leader must immediately make a morale check. If any of them fail, they are marked with move and a fire marker. Moved fire marker if they fail. So they basically see their... Head honcho die, right? And so they all need to make a morale check to see how they feel about this, right? Are they going to be able to act or are they stunned? Are they trying to figure out what to do? You know, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a very devastating attack to the Germans. Uh, and it was quite a lucky shot. They ended up rolling a three, right? on their attack, which caused that X result. So you can see a pretty small chance of that actually happening, but they do get they did get it. So the French draw first blood in World War II. Uh, well, at least their, you know, the first attack against the Germans, they ended up doing uh, first damage. Took out a major, a heavy machine gun of the Gross Deutschland Division and a truck. And as the attacker, you kind of got to risk moving up and taking your attacks because you can't just sit back in the buildings and hope to do something. So you're going to have to, what we were hoping to do is move these guys up here and then unload them, right? And then we would have prime opportunity to either assault these guys over here or shoot at these guys within two hexes, uh, which is... Obviously very important when we're talking Panzer Grenadier direct fire, but being within two hexes is a big difference than being within three hexes, because that is a minus or that adds a column modifier when you're three hexes away or farther. So moving up here, uh, you know, probably and it's interesting, right? It's interesting that this all played out exactly like the conclusion. Right At the end, they give you the conclusion that tells you what happened, and I'm not going to spoil it, but the first paragraph is Heitman Schwelz, Heitman, Hauptman, H-A-U-P-T-M-A-N-N, 
Felsch, F-E-L-S-C-H, which I'm assuming was their commander, was mortally wounded in the assault on the bear cage at the main bridge, right? So he was mortally wounded when they tried to take over this location, which is pretty close to where he ended up dying. And the attack stalled for several minutes, right? So now what we have to do is we have to do a morale check on our two lieutenants over there because they don't have a moved or fire marker on them. So the first guy, we're going to roll for this uh, this guy here in hex 0403. No, that's not it. 0405, there we go. We'll see if he's able to... He rolled a 9. His morale is a 9, so he's successful. And then we'll roll for the lieutenant behind him. He rolled a five. So both of the uh, both of our leaders, fortunately, are pretty high morale guys. So the fact that the major ended up dying. So two important things again: catastrophic loss. Anytime you lose a major or higher, all the units stacked with that unit uh, have to undergo a morale check, and then of course decapitation when the when the side loses their highest ranking leader. Right? Then all the other leader unactivated leaders have to make a morale check now what happens is the next turn right the guy that's going to be in charge right uh which is this captain which is this captain here in this hex right next turn uh the new senior leader must make a morale check if he passes then all forces operate normally. So basically he then takes over and gets everything under control, blah, blah, blah. But if he fails, every other leader must make a morale check. And if they fail, you have to put a moved and fire marker on all the units that fail. And in addition... The side suffers a minus one penalty to its initiative, but can never go less than zero. The decapitation event only happens once. So if the captain ends up dying, we don't have to do the decapitation event again. And since he's a captain, we don't have to worry about the catastrophic loss. All right. So decapitation, the beginning of next turn... We're going to roll to see if this guy here, let's see what he is. He is a 10. He's really good. Really good captain. And we're going to see if he can rally his troops together. He's got to pass his morale check. If he fails his morale check, then all the other leaders have to do a morale check. And if they fail, they get a moved or fire marker on them. And we also lose one to our initiative. Because our highest leader killed. And we lose one to our initiative because we lost two-step unit. So as you remember in the beginning. <laughs> Alright, the Germans initiative level is lowered by one for every two steps eliminated. Tanks count double, trucks don't count. So the the uh, two step, have uh, what was it? Heavy machine gun, right? Heavy machine gun, yes. So that's going to cost us one point, and then our uh, our uh, decapitation costs us one. So our morale, or our initiative, which was three, all of a sudden goes down to one with that one attack. And the French, if I'm not mistaken, have a one. Yeah, so it's evened up on that one attack. And as, as we talked about earlier with Panzer Grenadier, the fun thing about it is uh, you get these movements and attacks and fires and, like, you roll and nothing happens and nothing happens. Maybe a morale check, a unit becomes disrupted. And then all of a sudden, somebody's going to roll that super good two, right? Or the super good 12, right? And all of a sudden, that's going to change everything. And that's basically what happened in this attack. The French rule, rolled a three, very small chance. They got it and destroyed that vehicle. And now everything has changed because 10 points of firepower are out. Our major is out. And it was a devastating loss.
So, uh, all right. So now that was the German activation. So now we're going to bring on a machine gun or a uh, motorcycle team with the leader is going to ride on the motorcycles team, right? And they're going to come on the board, and they're going to use this road for road movement. So one, two, for one. Now, they're ending a slope X on the road. So it cost normally two spaces for one movement point. But since we're going uphill, we're crossing... A snow packs, it's going to cost us two extra points. So two, and the point from to go from here to here is three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for going up the snow packs. Right? And now we run into the problem with the rules is because if we cross this slope X, if we cross this slope X, the slope X says, you know, it makes sense that we're going downhill. We're going from uphill to downhill. So you wouldn't pay the extra cost as you go down. But if you look at the slope hex, a slope hex is any hex with an elevation line running through it. So according to the rules, this is a slope hex. So this would be a slope hex. This would also be a slope hex. So again, one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can only make it to right there because according to the rules, if a slope X is in it, slope line is in it, a slope X is any hex with an elevation line running through it, representing a transition from lower elevation to higher elevation, which isn't true because this is going from higher to lower. All right, so that's as far as he can go. Okay, we got to get out some markers here now. Don't get me wrong; it's 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 a good game and a good system. It just, good lord, it shouldn't be that hard. It's like it's like playing freaking Stratomatic hockey. It shouldn't be that freaking hard. All right, so the French activated is back to the German units. So what do we got left over here? Not much since they wiped out everything. So we got that guy. We got this guy. Right. So it's time. It's time. All right. So what we have is we have a leader, a truck, another heavy machine gun, Gross Deutschland Division, <laughs> How far do we want to move these guys up? Whew. Clear hex. A clear hex. Clear hex for our truck costs us two. They only only have eight. Most of these guys are spent. This I think this guy was spent and maybe the little counter fell off it, if I'm not mistaken. I think he is spent though. Because there was a counter on the floor, and I think it was, must have come off of this guy. I think he was spent. I think he had taken a second shot. Uh, actually, maybe, I don't remember. I'm just going to mark him that way, because I thought he was spent. All right, so you can see most everyone's done. The Germans do have some units to bring up. Now, this is where... You run into problems as a defender, right? Because 
we could just move right up adjacent to this guy, and there's nothing, nothing he can do about it because he's got no. But well, he does have these guys, this guy back here to shoot. So this guy could use an AT fire at a range of four. So he, uh, I don't think the roadblock blocks line of sight. Let's see, that is a special rule in France, and of course I knocked them all over. Oh, and by the way, because all these guys are in limited terrain, but they've shot, right? All these guys are in limited terrain, but they've shot, so they are all spotted as well. This, these guys have been spotted. And there's rules on how to get rid of that spotted counter, but let's see if I can find another one here somewhere, maybe. Come on. Really? No, nope. can't find any more. Spotted, there we go. So all these guys have been spotted because even though they're in limited terrain, they have shot. All right, so the roadblock um, units are set up in a hex containing a roadblock marker and treated as being dug in. Oh, roadblocks do not block line of sight. Sure. That's a lie. <laughs> roadblocks do not block line of sight. All right. So, he does have... One, two, three, four. He could do... He does have one firepower. And, of course, we saw the fact that trucks are pretty squishy. I, I don't even know why they give me trucks because all it does is get in the way, right? So the first thing we're going to do here is we have this mortar team. So the mortar team, 81 millimeter mortar team, they're going to they're going to they're going to shoot at these guys up here at the top of the hill. This heavy machine gun up here. There's a leader up there. They want to shoot at these guys. Uh, actually, maybe not, because it is uphill. There is a modifier on the bombardment table, and you're shooting uphill, right? Isn't there? Uh, all right. No, because I guess they're setting the rockets up. The slope. I think the slope only affects. Well, let's look. Yeah, minus one to direct fire and minus one call, minus one attack AT fire if firing unit is at a lower elevation. Right. So this guy is at a lower elevation. Normally, this town right here, town or village, depending on what the rules say about it, which we can't find, uh, goes down this hex side here. Right. So this would normally block, but because this. It's right down the hex side. We can assume that the guys are shooting on this side of the hex where they can have more open area to see these guys. These guys are spotted. So we have uh, 8 firepower, 10 spaces away, plenty of range there. Germans have to get them back now. They didn't realize the French were actually going to shoot back here as they... It's supposed to be a beautiful morning. The gross Deutschland singing songs, invading another country. They're not shooting at us. And then all of a sudden, damn. All right, so we have modifiers. The modifiers are going to be actually 
not anything bad. We get a plus one modifier because the unit can actually see the unit. So say, for example, we wanted this mortar unit here. My big hand's in the way here. Wanted to mortar these guys. Well, this, this hex here is a building hex. So that would block line of sight. But this leader that's in here can spot for the mortar. And the mortar could still bombard them. But uh, there is a, you get a bonus when you can actually see the units that you're trying to bombard. This case, we wouldn't see it. We'd still get a modifier because there's three combat units in here, though. Uh, but we would also get, they, these guys are in the, uh, dug in. So they get a, they would get a minus one and a plus one. So it's better to attack these guys because we're going to get a plus one and no minus one. So we're going to we're going to uh, switch over to the desktop here so you can see our bombardment. Uh, so target hex is spotted by the firing unit. Yes. Is it a mortar anti-tank gun? Uh, oh, actually, if we attack this guy, see the problem with attacking this guy is this building is in the way from here to here because this building's in the way. So, I don't think I see anything else. Uh, so that's going to be it. So we're on the 8 column. We go up to the 12 column. This 12 column right there to see if we get any kind of result. Come on now. Let's get some, let's get a result here on the 12 column here. Here we go. 12 column. Oh, we rolled an 11. Usually in Panzer Grenadier, anytime you roll really, really high, are really really low that is good result um, I can't remember there's an 11 for you so we look on the 12 column under the 11 and that is going to be an M1 result so morale and adding one to the dice roll so interesting hmm interesting all right so we have the lieutenant the French lieutenant is a nine. French lieutenant has a morale of nine. He does not get his own bonus. So he doesn't get to add one to himself. So he's a nine. We're going to add one to the dice roll to see what happens. He needs eight or less. He rolls a three. He's just fine. Now, the lieutenant with the one morale bonus. Right there. Hey, Viper Dave, how you doing? Can add his one morale to the heavy machine gun. The heavy machine gun, again, if you're just uh, we're trying to remember here. The uh, starting morale... Starting morale is 7 for full strength units, 6 for half strength units. So 7 is the current morale of this heavy machine gun. He gets a plus 1 to his morale from the lieutenant. So he goes up to 8. But we're going to add 1 to the dice roll because it was an M1. So he's going to need a 7 or less. He rolls a 9. So this is going to be our first chance. To see what happens when a unit fails its morale. Do, 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 do. Alrighty. So. Who do, 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 do. Alright, let's switch you back over to the computer. 
zoom in a little bit, make it a little bit easier maybe for you guys to see. Morale check. All right, if the result is greater than the unit or leader's morale by one or two, it fails and becomes disrupted. It fails and becomes disrupted if it fails by one or two. So we rolled a nine. We add one to that because it was an M1, so it's a 10. His morale is a seven plus one for the lieutenant is an eight. 10 versus eight. So he has failed it by one or two. So if that is the case, it fails and becomes disrupted. If the unit uh, result is greater than by three or more, it becomes demoralized. If it's a 12, you automatically become demoralized. So demoralizes the French unit. Demoralizes the French unit, I'm sorry, uh, disrupts, disrupts, sorry, disrupts, disrupts the heavy machine gun. So let's see what happens when you are disrupted, right? Disrupted, a unit leader or leader has all of his combat strengths halved, may move only one hex per turn and cannot any enter any, any, the any, 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 any Cannot any enter? Good Lord, I am keep looking at enemy and it keeps changing the way I say it. Can't enter enemy occupied hexes. Demoralization, obviously, much better. You may not conduct any type of fire except defending against an assault. And you do so with one quarter of your normal firepower. You have your morale reduced by one... And you must try to, uh, to recover me away from the enemy. And there's the information. All right, so uh, the 10 is fine. The disrupted heavy machine gun is normally an 8 firepower. He's going to be at 4 firepower until he gets rid of his disruption marker. And... That will be it for the mortar attack. So good job by the mortar attack. Finally, the Germans did something a little bit. All right, so we still have some movement going on here. Some movement going on. So we need to figure out where the base place to bring this Yahoo is. Mm, can't bring them into these woods. That's going to be a problem. And the problem is, uh, all right, so if we look at anyone, right? So let's look at these guys here. So we have a truck, right? And we have a leader, and we have a unit inside the truck, right? When you move the truck, it counts against its movement points. When you decide to unload, right? Unload, it costs one movement point, unload those units outside the truck so these units empty out of the truck and then the truck can keep moving if you wanted to or run back to wherever it was going but these units that end uh, exit the truck cannot leave the hex that they enter so it costs a movement point to load on the vehicle so let's say this is our situation here. So we got a lieutenant and this unit and a truck. So they decide we're going to load on the truck. It costs one movement point for all of the units. So this truck, instead of having eight movement points, only has seven. Then they can go one, two, three, drop off those units for one movement point. So it's up to four, five, six, Seven. And these guys that emptied out can't exit the hex that they emptied out in. So that's that's basically, it counts one, oh, uh, hang on a second. Did I do that right? I want to make sure. So it costs one to move into the truck. 
So Chuck has seven movement points left. Two uh, count because we're going along the the um, the road, right? So this is so one to load them up. Two, three, four, five to unload those guys. Six, seven, eight. So yeah, so the truck could pick them up, run up here, drop them off, and drive back. So that's how. Uh, it's basically costs one movement point to load guys, one movement point to exit the guys, but it costs. And then when you exit the guys out of the truck, they cannot go into another hex. So it can't. You can't. Uh, Move this guy here and then drop these guys off and then have these guys have extra movement points to move in and do fancy dancy things. So anyways, uh, so these guys were here. How many guys are in this X? Do we have a infantry unit, a motorcycle unit, and a leader? So you have two units and a leader. So we can move in a truck that's loaded with some guys because they only count as one. Doesn't matter. They only count as one guy. So, question is, where are they going to go? <sighs> we need to really find a good position to... We need to start, I mean, we could drive right up here and unload, and then we could have a massive assault on the on the barricade here, which could be dangerous if we don't disrupt these guys or inflict any kind of damage. So what I was hoping to do is get into this hex right here, because it's a nice building hex, set up our heavy machine gun, uh, you know, both of our heavy machine guns in that hex and just, because it's only two hexes away, which is perfect spot. Perfect. Unfortunately, stupid French have that spot. <sighs> All right. So we're going to, we're going to try the same thing here. All right. <laughs> this could be, this could be the end of the Germans right here. So we're going to move one along the road, half a moon point and one, two to go there. So this, this guy down here can shoot. Uh, these guys, do they block him though? Let's see the rule. It's a good question, because the the uh, the roadblock there does not block line of sight. We already looked at that. That, but the fact that there's units in here that are considered to be entrenched in the roadblock, do they block line of sight? Because you can't shoot through. All right. Um, what are we looking for? We're looking for. We're looking for. Um, okay, so since they're in the roadblock, they're considered dug in according to the rules. Any hex except blah, 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 it takes us to do, 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 do. fired marker on a unit during each segment that it digs in, digging in, blah blah blah. After a dig in, unit marker is placed on the unit, it gains all the benefits of being def dug in. Defensive column modifier first fired assault. Uh, it just basically talks about how to. So let's do direct. Let's look under direct fire section. Block fire.
Oh, he'll be using anti. Uh, right, he'll be using the. He would be using. All right, so. Yeah, I guess it makes sense now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Direct fire may not be traced through hexes containing friendly non AMV units unless the firing unit is a heavy machine gun, an AFV, or an anti aircraft unit. These units may fire through hexes containing. All types of friendly units, if the fire is also traced through at least one hex, which contains... Oh, that's true. It has to contain no... Hmm. Ba -ba 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 -ba. All right. All right. Well, stop. There we go. So he can't actually shoot from here to here because he can't, you know, see the unit. It's too close to his own units here. Being dug in, I guess, I would think dug in units would not block that, but it does not say that. So. Mm -hmm. That's, I see. So the German are still moving, so that was two movement points to go there. Uh. Come down to this building, but that's going to give this guy plenty of opportunity to take an attack, but two movement points. He's going to go there and there. So when he goes there, this guy, one, two, three, four, will take an attack of opportunity on him because this now is an open hex behind the units and he can see that truck better and so he's going to take a shot at it so he has a firepower of one a minus one so two added to his dice total that's not good he's going to kill another one of our units isn't he six plus two is eight nothing happens thank god and this guy is marked. And so that was uh, one, two, three movement points. One movement point to unload these guys. So we're going to just put these guys under this marker here. Put the truck on the bottom of it. And these guys back here have fired. All right. So, Nilly, here we go. We're gonna French are gonna bring on these P78s here. P178, sorry. Uh, they're kind of off the board just a little bit here, but you'll see them come on here in a second. And uh, since they have each of them have their own leader, they will activate together. They have 11 movement points. That's gonna be one. Two, three, four, five, six. Uh, well, technically, let's back up. One, the road goes into this hex and back out, so this is a slow hex, right? So that's one moving point to go there. Going up the snow packs is how much for the motorized? Let's see here. Don't want to cheat anybody here. Let's see what we got. Soap is plus two, right? So it's going to cost him one, two, plus two. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yes, that's right. The towns. 
right? It costs you the full movement point to move in the towns. So you don't get the road bonus going into towns. Fortunately, it only costs one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, and eight, nine. Now that would be 10, 10, 11, 12. So we can't go there. We'd like to be on the hill up there. One, two, three. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight to there. Alrighty. Nine. That's where he's going to go. And the, this guy's following him, doing the same exact same thing, so he's going to make it here. So we have a, a half strength unit and a full strength unit. All right? And so they moved. And so the Germans are going to get last activation here. There's a lieutenant with a truck with a limbered AT gun, another truck with an engineer squad, and another truck with a reduced infantry. Ah, boy. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Yes? What do you need? What do you want? I'm a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Huh? I'm a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Winner? I re-evaluated the golf standings. I came in second place. Oh. Really? Well, that's good. Winner, winner. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so, what are we going to do with all these guys is the question. We want that AT gun up here somewhere where you can shoot. Let's look at its uh, stats. So, there is his stats. So, we can uh, two firepower, three range against infantry. Two firepower, six range against AT shots. How many units do we have in this X? We have only, we have a unit and two units and a leader. Again, can be a little problematic to have two, three units in because they get the column shift, more guys in there. But we still need to have line of sight to some of these things. Uh, there's an AT gun up here. It's just not a lot of cover, to be honest. All right, so... The truck with the AT gun is going to go along the road here. One, one and a half, and it's going to unload and limber up outs outside of that. And then this truck is just going to drive back here. It's going to have plenty of moving points. We'll just put it back in the back. So it's the, out of my way. Because there is there is a, another truck in there that came in already. So we don't need to have more than one truck. Now this truck here with the infantry and the half squad of infantry. So the squad with the full squad of infantry. Where are they going to go? Hmm. Man. 
Got guys there, got guys there. French are there, French are there, French are there, French are there, there, there. They've got a nice defensive line going here. I like to get a guy up here. Problem is, do you we have to use the road to get up there? Try and get in the woods up here. Problem is, we'd be adjacent to these guys. Plus, we got guys coming down the road at us. We could try to start assaulting across here with that wizard. Uh, where was the engineer? Was the engineer in here? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's an engineer and a half squad, right. The engineer and the half squad could go there. Start crossing. Mm, still think that's a bad idea. That's 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 gonna be bad. It's just not a lot of good areas to go right now. We're gonna have to over stack. We could go here, be three hexes away, but we get a column shift because we're shooting uphill. The French are definitely have the advantage right now, if I was to just be honest. Alright, so this lieutenant is coming in the truck with the engineers, and they're going to go somewhere. One, two, they're going to unload right there, out in the open. Yeah, I know, stupid, but... That's fine, and then they're going to move back three, four, five. He's got plenty of movement. And then this engineer is going to do the same thing, bring this guy, drop him off, and drive back. So we're going to have a bunch of trucks back here doing nothing, which is fine. So yeah, these guys are out in the open, but they are within two hexes now, which could be a problem. That is the end of the first turn. Woo hoo hoo! Everyone's marked with the move. Where's my move counter? Here we go. Everyone's shot, fired, moved, done whatever they're going to do. So now we're going to remove all the move counters. The guys that are spotted stay spotted. Come on. There you go. All right. So before we do initiative, before we even do anything with initiative, we got to roll for our Capitan here to see if he gets things under control because of our our uh, catastrophic loss there or, yeah I think it was it I keep getting the definitions between these two because of our what's it called I don't want to use the wrong term. Right, decapitation, sorry. Catastrophic loss is when the major died, right? But it's also decapitation. So because of the decapitation, the captain now needs to make a morale check. It doesn't cost an activation or anything like that. Uh, he needs to pass a morale check. If he fails a morale check, then all the other leaders on the board are going to be making morale checks. If they fail, they're going to get a move marker. So, Captain is a 10. He rolls a 4. So, Captain's now got everything under control for the Germans. And we will start with initiative for the next turn. But we're going to call this episode right now. But, should we 
Roll initiative first so I can think about... Yeah. So the French are the white dice. The Germans are the black dice. Each one gets a plus one to their initiative roll. Ooh, the Germans are going to win. So that's going to be huge. So four plus one is five. One plus one is two. Five minus two is three. We have the three, which is one and a half, and we round up. So the Germans are going to get two activations before the French can do anything. And this could be huge. Because if they can get some disruptions or, you know, things with especially... Oh, shit. Especially with these guys that are up close and personal. That's why the fact that the French took out the Major and the Heavy Machine Gun was so important was because it could cause some serious... Um, morale issues within the German army. Unfortunately, it didn't for them. But having that heavy machine gun blow up, and the uh, leader or the major the heavy machine gun two steps, the major another um, minus one to initiative minus one. So instead of a three initiative, a minus one or a one to initiative. So otherwise, the Germans would have three activations before the French. So, unfortunate, unfortunate for them. But now at least I got a chance to think about what the Germans, who, what attacks did they want to perform? What are their most important attacks? And again, we have a captain here who's adjacent to a lieutenant. So if the captain activates, he will activate everyone in his location, adjacent location, which means there will be this lieutenant and these guys for one activation. So there is a possibility to get multiple activations here. This mortar unit, you know, he's back here outside the range of any leader, but he still can activate with himself, use his mortar attack. He just can't enter a close hexer to an enemy. Not that he would probably do that as a mortar unit anyways. Um, so I will analyze and figure out what I wanted to do. Actually, this guy didn't activate last... Uh, did he activate? Yes, I think... He took a shot, right? Right, so he did activate. So this guy is also spotted. Uh, yeah, because he's just in a roadblock hex. So we should put a spotted marker on there just to make sure we know he's spotted. Just to make sure these guys are spotted as well. I'm not sure why their uh, little marker went away. Because they shot a million freaking times. Seemed like they shot a million freaking times. So these guys are spotted. These guys are automatically spotted because they're out in the open. These guys actually are not spotted other than within three hexes because they didn't... Oops, and this leader fell over backwards um where the hell do these guys come from that's a good question motorcycle all right oh they came around this way right so they came around this way and then ended up in this building how in the hell did they do that 10 movement points huh I don't think they came this way, did they? Uh, yeah, there's no way they could have made it that far. I think I screwed up on something. Because they only have 10 movement points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, I probably forgot about the building rule. So you would think in normal war gaming, right? Let's take this guy as an example. If you're moving along the road, it costs you half a movement point one, half a movement point one. But in Panzer Grenadier, you don't get the road bonus to enter a town or village, so it costs one to go there. And then you can go back to your half, 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 or third a point or whatever. So there is some interesting 
developments here as we go into the 11-15 hour. Already Rough Swordsman, Wargamer, Viper Dave, Dave Gardner. Y'all are awesome. Thanks for coming on by. I hope, hope you enjoyed our episode two. And we'll see you all next time here in Panzer Grenadier to see if we can figure out what the Germans are going to do. And I'm still trying to figure out the best angle for this camera without it being in the way as much as it is. Because it is kind of in the way. It's kind of annoying because every time I go to reach out here, my hand's like right on top of it. But... Anyways, I guess that's the joy of live streaming, right? Oh, God. Maybe something like this-ish. Problem is, when I have the lights on, then they get the reflections, and then you can't see everything. So I try to come in at more of an angle, you know, maybe back a little bit more of an angle, right? As opposed to up and down. But when you're in an angle and you can't see anything, are you guys getting seasick yet? Oh, my gosh. Sorry about that. Anyways, I'll see what I can do for next episode. Because most of the action now is going to focus in right about here. That's where most everything's going to happen. All righty. We'll see you all next time. Take care, guys. Have a good day. Uh, don't forget at... Uh, don't forget, today at uh, 3.30, today at 3.30, I will be hosting Iterian Hobbyist uh, in a live chat to talk about Wargaming. And if I can get Rough Swordsman sometime, I'd love to sit down and talk with him as well. Rough Swordsman, email me if you can and are interested. If you're still there, Rough Swordsman, email me at idjesterlive, idjesterlive at gmail.com. And uh, let's, let's get you in and talk wargaming sometime. So if you're up for that, let me know. Hopefully you're still there or at least listening. If you're not, I'll have to uh, get you next time you come into my stream or maybe even if you come today. All right, guys. See you next time. No. Oh, you're still there. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you do. We'll talk to you soon. Hopefully, email me, idjesterlive at gmail.com. And if you can come by at 3.30 today, if you're interested, let me know. All right, we'll talk to you soon. See you guys.